Hey guys, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the patch 0 0.6.0 Captain Skills update for the U.S. Destroyer line. And there are five builds that I have kind of put together just to kind of give you an idea of just some various builds that you could possibly go. As with the previous videos, you know, these captain skills that these aren't set in stone so don't feel obligated like oh peacekeeper says i gotta run these no if, if something is different is working for you run it don't feel obligated to run these builds these are just ideas thrown out there to get you guys thinking about different ways to set up your captain skills and they are by no means the only way to set up your captains and that's one of the nice parts about patch 0.6.0 is the fact that there are so many viable builds that you guys can select that there's really no wrong answers to what is the best build. They're all pretty viable. Enough of me talking about it. We've got our Fletcher here with Claude Harper. Let's dive on into these builds. This first build that I'm going to talk about is, is an anti-aircraft build and for the U.S. destroyers, this is, believe it or not, a viable build, especially if you're working in competitive play and you're running a ship that has the defensive fire consumable, that being Benson on up. Uh, obviously, Fletcher and Gearing don't give up a turret to get it, but the final hole option for the Benson does give you the defensive fire consumable. If you would like to run this build, uh, it, I have a feeling it's going to be more towards competitive gameplay and less towards randoms. Uh, so let's dive on in. The first one that I'm going to pick, first skill I'm going to pick is Preventative Maintenance, which is the 30% writ to the risk of incapacitation of modules. Now, as I've said before, this doesn't reduce the chances of your AA guns being knocked out. However, it does allow you to run Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1, which if you are interested in it, an AA build, that will double the hit points of your anti-aircraft guns. Uh, plus being a destroyer, you know, modules get taken out all the time, ha decreasing the chances of that happening an additional 30% just makes your ship more likely to survive an engagement without having all your engine and rudder knocked out. The next skill that I'm going to recommend is last stand. Um, this is a requirement for every destroyer. You will never see me build a destroyer build that doesn't have last stand. That is always going to be in there. From there, I'm going to take Superintendent. And the reason why I'm taking Superintendent over basic firing training is because you need that extra consumable. And having an extra defensive fire consumable, you will use it, especially if you're doing fleet escort duty and you're escorting a whole group of ships and shooting down aircraft all the time. Because every time that consumable comes up, you're going to be popping it every time there's aircraft nearby. Plus, it gives you an extra smoke, which is kind of nice. Or even if you're not running your defensive fire skill for whatever reason, it does give you that extra speed boost, which is kind of handy. From here, I am going to go to advanced firing training, which is going to push out your AA defense firing range by 20%. And this is going to give you a very healthy range at which your anti-aircraft guns will start engaging and, and the longer that aircraft are in your anti-aircraft bubble the more likely you are to shoot them down the more rolls get taken up against that you know rng factor to, to shoot down an aircraft so longer range is in this case more useful than outright dps that's what the defensive fire consumable is for with the outright dps the next one is going to be manual fire control for aa and this is going to double the anti-aircraft dps of your 5-inch 38 cal uh, dual-purpose guns. And with the increase in range, these two skills together make U.S. destroyers actually pretty potent anti-aircraft boats. It's certainly not going to be cruiser levels or Des Moines levels of anti-aircraft, but for a destroyer to you know suddenly pop this, uh, the defensive fire ability while escorting another ship, it's surprising how quickly sh uh, the aircraft will start to fall out of the sky, which is kind of nice. From there, I'm going to come jump on over to Concealment Expert. That's kind of a, a standard for destroyers as well. There's not a build here that I'm going to recommend that doesn't have Concealment Expert in it. Reducing your detection range by an additional 10% just means you're that much stealthier, which means that they are less likely to see you when they're on their attack run with their aircraft or, or when you are screening your, your fleet. 
From there, you have the choice of either expert loader, which is reducing the time to switch shells after you have uh, your, you know, let's say you have HE loaded and you want to switch to AP. It's going to reduce the time to switch by 50%. Not really that useful on a destroyers because it, it, you have such a quick reload anyway. The next one you could choose is priority target, which is just going to tell you how many people are actually selecting you and, and uh, have you in their crosshair or incoming fire alert. And that's those, you know, those three things are kind of toss away points of them. I would probably say priority targets a little bit more useful than any of the other ones, but you know, there's certainly no wrong answer there. So that's the any aircraft build. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is a balanced build. And this is the build that I personally am, am running and will finish out. And that's going to start off with preventative maintenance. It's going to go to last stand and it's going to come to a superintendent. And then it's going to go to concealment expert then to basic firing training, then to survivability expert, which gives you 350 HP for every tier. So at tier 10, that's 3,500 HP. That's a fairly decent chunk of hit points. And then for the last three-point skill, I'm going to take torpedo armament expertise. And what this does is this gives you a healthy balance of torpedo reload reduction as well as main battery reload reduction. It's a little less focused on the guns and a little bit more focused on the torpedoes. I think that this gives a very healthy balance between the two, uh, you know, different types of armament. And this is the build that I personally will be running. A more gun-focused build will basically be the same thing, but instead of torpedo armament expertise, you're going to jump on over to demolition expert. 2% doesn't seem like a whole lot. Until you factor in that the Japanese destroyers have a 7% fire chance and they don't struggle to start fires at all. In fact, a lot of people would say that their chance of starting a fire is actually really good. This is So this is going to bump your 5%, which is what you're currently at, to 7%. So you are going to start fires much, much easier. And for a gun-focused build, that is almost essential in your build. So the balance build and the gunnery build, you can see they only differ in one skill. So that kind of makes things handy. The next one that I'm going to talk about is going to be a destroyer hunting build. And this build is primarily focused on hunting down other destroyers. And so the skills are oriented towards that destroyer versus destroyer fight. And it's going to start off with preventative maintenance, last stand. And then it's going to come over here to survivability expert for the extra hit points. Concealment Expert for the reduction in your detection range. Then it's going to get Radio Location or RDF or RPF, Radio Position Finder. I, I've talked about in other videos, you know, the usefulness of, of this skill. It There are some people who have the intuition to know, okay, there is a very high likelihood that the enemy destroyer is going to be here. This skill will not help you with that. It only that if, say, something were to change, you now know for sure where that other destroyer is going to be so long as they are the closest enemy to you. And this can help on a number of different maps. Hotspot, you know, playing around in the A and C caps, going around the far side. It, it has its uses. You know, you always wonder, okay, yeah, the, the chances are there's a DD that's going to run that way, but you never know for sure. This skill will tell you for sure if they are the closest target to you. So that's kind of, I don't want to say it's necessary, but it removes that element of doubt, which makes it a very good skill to choose for a destroyer hunting role. Plus, at the end of the match, if you're still alive, it can tell you exactly where that annoying DD is at that, you know, is running away from you, or at least points you in the right direction. From there, you've got three choices in the, the three-point skill. Basic firing training for the reload time reduction. Uh, superintendent for the extra smoke and extra speed boost, or vigilance if you need the extra torpedo acquisition range or spotting torpedoes 25% further out. Personally, vigilance, I don't really think it's that useful. You know, you've got RDF pointing you in the right direction. If they're spotted, you should be maneuvering, and a destroyer is maneuverable enough that I don't think vigilance is really all that useful. I would personally take either superintendent or basic firing training. Of those two, I would definitely err on the side of superintendent, personally, for the extra consumables. And there's a good argument to be made for running basic firing training. So pick one. It really doesn't matter. 
Uh, from there, I would choose either Smokescreen Expert or High Alert as my last two skills. Smokescreen Expert increases the radius of your smoke by 20%, and High Alert brings your damage control party consumable up 10% quicker. So you you know you get your ability to repair damaged modules or incapacitated modules quicker, which is handy in a, in a knife fight. You know, oh crap, you took out my torpedo tubes. I was just about to launch them. Hit the button real quick and go. Oh, crap, he started me on fire. You don't have to wait nearly as long to put that fire out. So high alert is 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 a, a good choice there. Smokescreen expert has its advantages as well, but, uh, you know, it depends on your play style. This last build, you know, I call it a survivability build, but this really isn't that viable of a build. I just, I'm throwing it out there just so people have an idea of, you know, what can I do to make my destroyer last the longest in a fight? These are kind of the skills that I would take. And those are going to start off again with preventative maintenance and last stand. It's going to go to superintendent, then to concealment expert, then to smoke screen expert then to Vigilance, then to Superintendent. Wait a minute. We've got Superintendent in there twice. (laughs) I'll have to recalculate these points. And then for the last one, it will go to either Priority Target or Expert Loader or Incoming Fire Alert. Um, That build, you know, it's not the most viable of builds that you could possibly take. I think you give up way too much in offensive capabilities for defensive capabilities. You know, wise use of your smoke and your uh, consumables will definitely help you out much more than going for this build. But, you know, hey, if it works for you guys, by all means, please run it. Don't feel like, you know, oh, Peace doesn't recommend it. Uh, It's not a good build. No, that's not at all what I'm saying. Definitely use it if it works for you. This is just, I I just don't personally see it for me to be all that useful. Uh, You know, if you guys have any other ideas for builds, throw them down in the comment section. I'm I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys and see what you guys think for different builds. And this is the last of the patch 0.6.0 update videos for the captain skills. So that means the next two videos are going to be the captain skills for the Japanese destroyers on Wednesday and U.S. cruisers on Friday. So look forward to seeing those videos. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.